welcome to another episode of Talking Shop. I'm Justin Costelli, if you don't remember who I am. We're coming to you live again from Body Evolution CrossFit, which is my home CrossFit gym in Fishers, Indiana. Uh, Rocky Ziegler with me again. If you did not see the previous video, he was with me at the office with Isaiah Douglas. Uh, we do what we just did, what you do when you come see me. If you come visit me, uh, we're gonna go get a workout in. So we just got a workout done, uh, did some bench and some, some squatting. And as we were talking back at the office, Rocky, you were telling me that you have kind of a unique following of clients. So I thought a good conversation for this would be kind of talking about what your client looks like, what that following is, and then talking about a couple of the common planning techniques or, or things that you see with them, because I think right. they apply across the board. Yeah. So why don't you tell everybody a little bit about your following of people? Yeah. So um, in, uh, in, in my area, there's a, a Hallmark Cards manufacturing facility, so they, they don't make uh, well, let me back up. What Peoria is mainly known for is Caterpillar. Okay. Ironically, uh, a, a good portion of my clients don't work at Caterpillar, um, but uh, I do have a few that do. But uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, I guess my whole point was, um, I, I heard it said early on in the business when I started that you're, you'll start to attract a clientele that's kind of like you. I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. I'm a regular kind of guy. And so that's, uh, that's who I primarily work with. There are a lot of folks like that. And mm -hmm. so um, you know, a couple of the common issues I see with those folks, um, <clears throat> namely with uh, defined benefit plans, cash balance plans in particular, is uh, um, at least with uh, a lot of the folks I work with, there's quite a few uh, these old, you know, cash balance plans that, mm -hmm. that cash balance plans that have been on the books for a while. And Young people out there, you won't see one of those. Again. <laughs> yeah, no, those are a few and far between these days. But um, yeah, there's so there's a lot of decisions to make around that. You know, do you take the monthly payments? What type of monthly payments do you take? Do you take Cola, do you take non cola, higher payout up front, you know, higher payout down the road, um, or do you take a lump sum? And so there's a lot of planning that goes into, you know, making that decision. I, I, I see that issue quite a bit. Um, I also see the, so, the, the social security issue quite a bit too, mm -hmm. when, when they should take that. Um, so those are, I guess, probably the two most common things I see. So going back to the pension um, situation, so way back when in my career I worked with teachers in Indiana, okay. they have a similar situation. Indiana Teach Retirement, they've got an annuity portion that they have some decisions to make, they also have a pension. Mm -hmm. In that pension, they have survivorship options, you yeah. take straight life. Are those decisions that you think most people are able to figure out on their own? And obviously the answer for you and I is gonna be no, you should work with a financial advisor, but take the financial advisor head off. Realistically, do most people have a grasp of all of the things that go into that decision, longevity, inflation? Do you think that most people can make that decision on their own? So obviously I'm biased, but but no, I, I, I don't think so. There's so many things like you just mentioned that go into play. You know, do you, do you take a higher payout up front and not have any cost of living adjustment? Do you take the cost of living? Do you, you know, are there any survivorship benefits there as well? Uh, you know, another question I get a lot is if, <clears throat> if you were to take payments for 10 years and then the participant were to pass away, what's left over? So there's a lot of different questions out there that I, I think tend to get glossed over quite a bit. So, and they're important, they're important and, decisions. And I would agree. I mean, not that people can't create their own spreadsheet and kind of crunch sure. some numbers, but I think there's some things that as an advisor and experience shows us of life situations that you can't plan for. And, and obviously we can't know they're going to happen, but we can have that conversation of the what if. Yeah. So the example you just said, if you pass away before 10 years, right. what happens, sure. what if? Yeah. So I think those are things that when you look at all the numbers on paper, you can see what is the higher amount, but you may not know how life situations can impact those decisions. Yeah. So I would agree with you. Um, again, not because we're advisors, yeah. but I do think that there is value towards life experience and looking at numbers as well. Yeah, and you mentioned what if. That's that's what I get into these conversations. Kind of everything revolves around what if. What if I pass away in 20 years? What if I pass away in 10 years? What if I you know, don't take the cola? What if I do take it? There's just a lot of what ifs around all those decisions. And do you have a preferred strategy going back to Social Security? Not giving advice, so this is not advice, but um, I feel like a lot of times advisors have kind of an ideal strategy like this is the goal so for example mine would be planning for longevity if I have good health mm -hmm. for my clients and they have longevity <clears throat> in their family <clears throat> more times than not I'm gonna try to go for the one that gives us the best long-term Social Security plan sure. I recently read of a firm that it, you know, says that they would rather see their clients <clears throat> get a higher amount of income up front and they actually encourage them to not worry about break-even and long long-term again but have the money up front do you, I, I think it depends on wishes as well, uh, you know, obviously, but do you have a preferred strategy or do you take it case by case yeah, always? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I tend to take it case by case just because I see, um, I, I don't know about you, I see so many different cases, um, you know, folks with longevity in their family, folks without it, um, folks who want to retire early or want to retire late for whatever reason. So yeah, I, I generally take it on a case by case basis is usually what I see. And even though I have that longevity as the goal, 
the way I, what I tell my clients is, okay, this is what I want our strategy to be for longevity purposes. It's age 70 is what we're shooting for maybe, yeah. or maybe 66 and 70 if it's, if it's a couple. Mm -hmm. But our social security decision is a year by year evaluation. So okay. we're 62, we evaluate, do we need to take it sooner? No, we keep pushing it out to see if we can hit that long-term goal. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you know, five years into retirement, we don't change our plans and we both take it at 66 because a health issue came up mm -hmm. or maybe plans have changed. Maybe um, you had an inheritance come in and that gives you more different plans. So I, mm -hmm. I think that um, I like the fact that you have the case by case, which is what I think every answer should be and is really when it comes to planning. <laughs> But I, I think that I like to shoot for the longevity, but review it year by year. Sure, so yeah. kind of, that's a, and that's a good strategy. I think that I'm going best of both worlds. Okay, now. all right. Yeah. <laughs> so last last question for yeah. you. We touched on it a little bit in the last video, but now I would like a different answer. Okay. New year, it's January. What are you most excited about in the upcoming year? Business wise, personal wise, does it matter? Whatever you want. No? Whatever okay. you want. Okay. This is this um, is for everybody to get to know Rocky. Okay. So. Okay. What am I most excited about? Um, so I guess in the previous video I mentioned the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually pretty excited this year uh so my my kids are six four and then i have twin nearly three-year-olds so mm -hmm. we're actually doing two uh, i guess one full-fledged vacation okay and then one kind of mini vacation next month so really since my kids have been born this is kind of our first like venture out with uh -huh. all of them so we're driving to florida in, okay. in june mm -hmm. um you doing disney yes okay yeah so uh with my in-laws we're doing a we're, we're you know we're gonna do a house on the beach kind of thing uh -huh. and hang out yeah, it's uh, maybe a couple hours away from Disney, so we're doing nice. that. But yeah, we're, we're driving from Illinois down to Florida with all four in the car. So uh, we made that drive a few years back, okay. with just two. Okay. Um, and it really wasn't that bad. Okay, we drove that's that's most of the way, stayed overnight, okay. and finished up the drive. Okay. I think that's uh, what we're going to do too. And on the way home, it was straight through. It was ready to get home. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I bet. Awesome. I bet. Well, Rocky, thanks for taking the time to join me in the gym. That's thanks for taking the time sure. to uh, Thank you. come to the video, and then we will head back and kind of talk some shop on our own, compare business notes and kind of, yeah. kind of go there. Thanks so, for having me on, man. Thanks for the workout. No, definitely. So everybody, thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for more episodes of Talking Shop and we'll see you in the next episode.